ladies and gentlemen, for the opening keynote, please welcome Ms. Karima El Khoury, United Nations Resident Coordinator in Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei Darussalam. His Royal Highness Sultan Nazreen Muazzuddin Shah Ibn al Marhum Sultan Aslan Muhibuddin Shah al Maghfurullah, Mr. Farooz Nader, Executive Director, Global Compact, Malaysia and Brunei, Mr. Eddie, distinguished speakers and panelists, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. I thank the UN Global Compact for the opportunity to speak at the Go ESG Summit 2022 and command their efforts to enhance the contribution of the private sector to environmental, social, and governance outcomes. I am well aware that the ASEAN companies, and especially in the countries I cover, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei, have long accepted their ESG responsibilities. However, I want today to advocate for still greater alignment with the SDGs and the mainstreaming of ESG practices with regular business activities. This is both a route to boosting the competitiveness of businesses and a means of addressing SDG priorities. Referring also to the summit theme, data lie at the very heart of these efforts. Data including official sources and ES <clears throat> ESR data sets collected by businesses themselves are the lifeblood of decision making. With technological changes, the demand and supply of data have grown exponentially. These trends will continue to accelerate with unconventional data sources gaining more relevance as big data and data analytics become an integral part of how we understand the world and connect things. Ladies and gentlemen, two primary challenges dominate the 2030 agenda and provide overriding priorities. The first is the pandemic and the slow and imbalanced recovery. COVID-19 has caused lasting deficits, including reversal in hard-won development gains and disruptions in SDG progress. The conflict in Ukraine has triggered severe cost of living pressures, followed by rapid rises in interest rates and the premises of a global liquidity crisis. Progress is severely lagging and neither Asia-Pacific nor ASEAN is on track to achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Nevertheless, ASEAN member states are, member, uh, are better placed than others. They are home to some of the world's most vibrant and inclusive economies and have solid track records of development progress. The strength of ASEAN's private sector, including here in Malaysia, is a key ingredient of this resilience, and the role of businesses has never been more important in delivering a full recovery. Climate change presents a second, equally pressing set of imperatives, and we have all witnessed tangible impacts in every part of the world, including in Malaysia. The deliberations at COP27 were guided by two overarching themes, justice for poorer nations on the front line of climate impact, and ambition to keep the 1.5 degree limit alive. COP27 made progress towards equity with important decisions on loss and damage and commitments to finance. Yet, it also fell somewhat short, most notably on the required reductions in emissions. A major leap forward is therefore needed if Runway rises in temperatures are to be avoided. Again, the private sector must play a central role. Consumers and producers in most economies will need to live with considerably lower carbon emissions. This will have to be achieved through efficiencies, behavioral change, and the take-up of new and greener technologies. The UN Secretary General has called for a climate solidarity pact between all member states to combine their capacities and resources 
to deliver a just energy transition, drawing on all partners, including businesses and financial institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, businesses in the region have significant ESG challenges. They also have invaluable opportunities. Delivering sustainability and promoting inclusion is increasingly integral to corporate strategy. A recent survey by IT services firm Kindrill found that some 77% of ASEAN enterprises are actively focused on becoming more sustainable. More and more businesses are taking the further step to ensure investments and plans are fully aligned with the SDGs. To reiterate, this is not merely to meet the requirements of good corporate citizenship, but crucially to address value and boost the bottom line. For some sectors, the incentives are clear. For example, fossil fuels, where investments are in dangers of becoming stranded assets. Yet, for all businesses, greener production methods are inherently more efficient. Inclusive hiring and sourcing practices have clear long-term productivity gains. Investors are progressively favoring ESG-compliant projects, and mainstreaming ESG requirements can deliver an edge in markets increasingly dominated by savvy consumers. Combating the threats and seizing the opportunities, however, requires effective planning and implementation. The same survey I quoted also suggests that ASEAN businesses are still grappling with how to integrate ESG considerations and lack a strategic approach. They tend, therefore, to lag behind their global competitors. Recognizing these challenges, the UN stands ready to partner with private sector to enable firms to contribute to SDG progress while also benefiting business performance. I see four potential pathways we might explore together. First, on SDG data. As the custodian of the global goals, the UN can offer a reliable source of officially reported high-quality data. Although data gap gaps remain on many SDG indicators, we are ready to share our knowledge and facilitate access to the SDG global database, country profiles, SDG analytics, and other resources. The UN Data Collaborative Initiative seeks to bring together governments, academic and private sector partners to design and co-develop SDG data innovations. Second, we are keen to support enterprises' own ASDG, uh, sorry, ESG data and, and evidence bases. One such initiative is our work in Malaysia with the UN Global Compact to build an information and data sharing platform under the banner Together for SDGs. This will enable companies to share information on, SDG, on ESG activities and foster interactions within companies, between companies, and with civil society and academia. Third, UN agencies are increasingly reaching out to businesses here in Malaysia and elsewhere on several SDG mandates. These efforts offer possibilities for tailored firm-level partnerships. Key areas include human rights and business practices, SDG financing, social protection, women's empowerment, climate action, digital transformation, and trade promotion. Fourth and last, as a key partner of national governments, the UN is often able to act as a key interlocutor and advocate for policy and regulatory reform, an area often relevant to ESG objectives. Let us now work together to enable businesses to become still more active partners in putting the SDGs back on track. I will close here. I thank our partners at the Global Compact Malaysia chapter and wish you all very good and productive conference discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Karima El Khoury, United Nations Resident Coordinator in Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei Darussalam for the opening keynote remarks.